After months of development and delays caused by regulatory hurdles, SpaceX finally launched its massive Starship for its second integrated test flight. The first flight in April had its positives, but eventually ended with an explosion of the craft shortly after liftoff. So, how did this new test compare to the first? And what does this second flight mean for SpaceX going forward? Let's take a look at how it unfolded and what SpaceX learned from the historic event. Taking off from SpaceX's Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas, the Starship and Super Heavy vehicle encountered a brief delay in the launch process due to a late propellant load issue on the upper stage. However, aside from this delay, no other issues were reported during the countdown. On South Padre Island, just north of Boca Chica, hundreds of spectators gathered to witness the launch. The crowd cheered as the 33 Raptor engines on the Starship's first stage illuminated the plume with an orange glow, marking the commencement of the massive rocket's ascent. Unlike the first flight in April, where several Raptors shut down, the Super Heavy boosters appeared to function normally during their ascent, with no obvious failures reported. Following liftoff, the Starship engaged its six engines and separated from the booster approximately 2 minutes and 45 seconds into the flight. This marked a test of a novel hot staging technique, where an engine ignition occurs before stage separation, aiming to enhance overall performance. Starship's new hot stage performance was the first time this technique has been done successfully with a rocket vehicle of this size. It's crucial to note that while this technique is new to the Starship system, it is not uncommon in the broader aerospace context. As the flip maneuver unfolded, indicating the booster's engine section, concerns arose despite the initial success of the hot staging approach. Upon closer analysis, it was discovered that during the flip, several engines failed to reignite. SpaceX's quality engineering manager, Kate Tice, addressed this development during the live webcast, expressing the intention to utilize the gathered data to refine the hot staging sequence and potentially enhance the hardware for future flights. Subsequently, the Super Heavy was scheduled to execute a boostback maneuver in preparation for a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. However, around three and a half minutes after liftoff, the booster experienced a breakup, described by SpaceX as a rapid unscheduled disassembly, a term commonly used in rocket engineering. While it took some time to identify the root cause, SpaceX's launched webcast hosts highlighted that one of the primary objectives of the flight was to assess how the booster could handle the stresses associated with the hot staging technique. The plan was for Starship to continue its ascent and shut down its engines approximately eight and a half minutes after liftoff. SpaceX aimed to establish signal acquisition with the spacecraft at its target altitude of around 150 miles, or 250 kilometers. However, towards the end of the burn, communication was lost with the vehicle. At the time of the remote signal loss, Starship was at an altitude of 148 kilometers and moving at about 24,000 kilometers per hour, nearly reaching orbital velocity. During the live broadcast, Siva Bharadvaj, a SpaceX operations engineer, clarified that the goal for the day was not orbit, but almost orbit. He explained that they aimed to achieve a thrust profile similar to what would be required for orbit and the corresponding energy levels needed for re-entry. John Innsprucker, Principal Integration Engineer at SpaceX, mentioned on the webcast that the automated flight termination system on Starship was activated very late in the burn, though he did not provide details on why this occurred. The original plan for the flight aimed at completing nearly one trip around the planet without entering orbit. Starship was intended to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and splash down near Hawaii approximately 90 minutes later. Given the circumstances, it's not surprising that the second test flight of Starship exceeded the duration and altitude achieved during the first test flight on April 20th, which faced challenges during the separation phase leading to an explosion due to remote detonation. Despite the rapid, unscheduled disassembly of both the Super Heavy booster and the ship, SpaceX still deems the second test a great success. The final remote measurements from Saturday's launch indicated that Starship reached an altitude of 148 kilometers, or 91 miles, notably surpassing the space boundary of 62 miles, or 100 kilometers. SpaceX's quality engineering manager, Kate Tice, expressed satisfaction with the outcome, stating that despite the rapid unscheduled disassembly of the booster and the ship, SpaceX gathered tons of data from the test that will be used to make significant improvements in the future. Looking ahead for SpaceX, attention is now turning to the launch pad, a focal point of curiosity following the recent launch. In April, the simultaneous thrust of all 33 Raptor engines during the Super Heavy launch created a significant impact, 
resulting in a large crater beneath the launch pad and debris scattering up to 10 kilometers from the landing site. However, after the latest launch, the launch pad appeared to not only be intact, but also in relatively good condition. It seems a quick polish and a few coats of paint might be all it needs for the next launch. This resilience is attributed to the efficient operation of the water deluge system and the massive steel cooling plate during the launch. The water deluge system pumps water from dedicated tanks through pipelines to steel plates, which then disperse the water through small holes, resembling upside-down shower heads. This process helps deflect and disperse the fire, effectively reducing the heat and pressure generated by the 33 Raptor engines. Starship didn't fulfill its mission, as it was expected to journey into space for over an hour, covering about three-quarters of the Earth's circumference and splashing down into the sea. However, the overall outcome is still considered a victory, highlighting substantial progress in SpaceX's research and development efforts. The enthusiasm extended beyond the on-site spectators, as immediately after the Starship launch, SpaceX took to its social media platforms to congratulate the entire SpaceX team on the successful second integrated flight test of Starship. The message acknowledged Starship's successful liftoff under the power of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and its successful navigation through the stage separation process. Expressing a strong commitment to future ambitious goals, CEO Elon Musk extended congratulations to his team at SpaceX. He emphasized the importance of learning from tests like the recent one, stating that success is derived from the lessons acquired. The insights gained from today's test will play a crucial role in enhancing the reliability of Starship, aligning with SpaceX's overarching mission of making life multiplanetary. Further commendations came from Bill Nelson, acknowledging the progress made in the flight test. He described spaceflight as a bold adventure requiring a can-do spirit and daring innovation. Nelson highlighted the significance of today's test as an opportunity for learning, emphasizing that together, NASA and SpaceX are poised to return humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Jim Free, NASA's head of exploration, noting that each test brings us a step closer to achieving the landmark of putting the first woman on the moon with the Artemis III Starship human landing system. He expressed anticipation for the lessons to be derived from this test, bringing us closer to the next significant milestone in space exploration. Looking ahead, SpaceX is setting its sights on an ambitious schedule for Starship, targeting test flights potentially as frequently as monthly. Achieving this rapid cadence would be a significant stride towards qualifying Starship for manned missions, aligning with the timelines for Artemis III. Drawing inspiration from the impressive track record of the Falcon 9 rocket, which has averaged more than a launch per week in recent years, SpaceX is keen to replicate and exceed this launch frequency with its latest spacecraft. This goal underlines the company's commitment to advancing its capabilities and setting new benchmarks in space exploration. Starship's second launch marks a significant milestone for SpaceX, not only showcasing progress in the Starship program, but also indicating an increased launch cadence for the new vehicle. This heightened activity is expected to expedite the refinement of Starship's reliability for its planned missions. As part of NASA's contract, an unpiloted lunar test flight is required before astronauts attempt a landing. Originally targeting late 2025 for the first lunar landing with astronauts on board, the Artemis program continues to advance. Beyond NASA's endeavor, at least three all-civilian missions have been scheduled. Billionaire Jared Isaacman, known for chartering the first private crew dragonflight to low Earth orbit in 2019, plans to be aboard the first piloted orbital flight of a starship as part of his Polaris Dawn program. Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa, who visited the International Space Station in 2021, has chartered a starship flight named Dear Moon intending to embark on a privately funded journey around the moon with an assistant, 10 artists, and influencers. It's exciting to see what's in store for the Starship in the coming months. It took SpaceX around seven months to launch the Starship for the second time after making several upgrades to the rocket and the launch infrastructure, not to mention the lengthy review process from the FAA. Do you think SpaceX can arrange the next test in the coming months, or will it take more time? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.